Hi, Lisa Marie of Global One Health. This video was a continuation of the Turkish Get Up series. The Turkish Get Up was a complex exercise, so I've opted to break it apart into a few videos so that I can really uh, talk about the various components that comprise the Get Up. So the Get Up is a great body weight exercise um, initially, as I highly recommend doing it as a naked Get Up, as I've referenced in those earlier videos because you really want to make sure that you know the sequential pattern of the get-up because it is a lot to think about. Uh, you are starting in a supine position on the ground, you transition up to standing, and then go all the way back down to the ground to the exact starting position that you began in. So there's a lot of movement involved. Um, really emphasize, and they talk about this in the certification as well, when you're learning the get-up, uh, make sure you do it in the naked format. No weights. Uh, even though it's traditionally done with a kettlebell, you can certainly use a dumbbell for it. Um, but either way, do not load your getup until you know the sequential pattern very well and you're not really thinking about what comes next. If your transitions are not clean, you're putting yourself under risk because remember, you're going to be having uh, a weight overhead. You're moving the angle of your body. Safety first. You don't want to lose your bearing or not have your transitions clean and then put yourself in a safety situation. So that's important, very important point to readdress. So the first two videos covered how to get from the starting position on the back, supine position to standing. Um, from this video on, I'm going to talk about how to do what is also referred to as the reverse get up, and that is beginning in the standing position, getting back down to the ground. So one thing that they've talked about in the certification when I was doing my uh, strong first cert SFG is if you're taking a picture of somebody in the get up, Say, for example, you're going to take a picture of me in this position. You wouldn't know if I was coming from the ground to vertical or in the reverse getup. So the key is you want your Turkish getup to look almost like a mirror image of itself. So if you're stopping at each, as they also reference in, the, in this course, um, about your base camp. So that is every time you hit a different position in the getup, it's not meant to be kind of just done through quickly. The Turkish getup is not a speed exercise. Um, it's referred to as a grind exercise, right? It's a slow grind. Um, they even encourage you doing the get up slowly in the cert. Um, and I recommend that even if you're not learning the get up and you're very comfortable with it, you know, it, it harder is, is uh, slower is more difficult because then you're showing that you can execute control in the movement and in the transitions. And of course, more time under tension in that overhead position. So don't practice the get up quickly. Stop at each base camp as they refer to it in the certification and own your positions and each level that you can really um, know if your setup is correct and that's how you can learn from there. So if we're starting from the standing position um, here, Right, so I'll back up just a little bit. Right, so now the one thing is when I filmed the first two videos, I was starting from the ground up and I had the screen set up horizontally. Here I'm going to set up vertical because I'm starting from standing and I don't want the upper body to get cut off. And I'm also going to talk a bit more specifically about the focus of the head. So let's talk about that first. Um, so in, in general, in the getup, for most parts of the getup, I'm going to be looking up at my loaded arm. Um, even if you're doing the naked format, you're still training yourself to what you would do under load. So for majority of the Turkish getup, you are looking up at the kettlebell. The only mo moments or movements in the getup where you're not is in that tra that midway point when you're standing on two legs equally weighted and your arm is always overhead, but you're looking straight forward in the standing position and in the kneeling lunge, whether you're coming from the ground up or from standing back down, you are looking straight forward. Other than that, in all other components and movements in the get up and transitions, you want to be looking at your bell. So, and I will just, I wanted to make sure I, I talked about that a little bit more specifically as I develop this Turkish get up video series. So if I'm starting with this arm overhead, one little cue that they gave in the course, uh, especially if you're learning to get up and you, you know, you get here and then you're like, oh, this leg comes back, you know, you're focusing on the weight. And, if you forget what leg you're moving on, right? So whatever leg is coming forward from the ground up, that's the same leg that goes back because it is the mirror image of it. But if you forget in your transition, if the wrong leg goes back, now you've set yourself up for, you, you, can't, you can't finish the, the transition of the movement properly, right? So uh, a nice little cue that they gave in the course was once you reach that standing position, I've just come up into that 
vertical upright position, the down arm is going to just tap the leg that's right next to it. So the same arm, same leg. So if this is my down arm, I would with my hand on my fist, I'm going to tap that leg. And that's just a little trigger to the brain nervous system, just to make sure that the correct leg goes back until you have your sequential pattern down in your brain and it's subconscious that your body knows what to do instinctively. So I've just got, I'm starting for the reverse, get up from here. I'm loaded, my core is tight, of course, glutes contracted, uh, lats, I'm packed, right? So I tap the leg, so now I know this is the leg that's gonna go back. So again, I'm gonna go back down the way I came up. So that is that exact mirror transition. Now, as I mentioned in the um, second video, that there are two options for how you get from the hand to the kneeling lunge. Um, and I encourage you to experiment with both. So I'm going to show you both transitions as I talked about that in the second video from the ground up. I'm going to still address that from in the reverse get up as well. Now, I learned it pivoting on the down knee, and that's just what my body does instinctively from doing so many Turkish get ups. But I'm going to show you what both options are. Now, the reason when do you decide what you want? Well, if you, if you learn, try both and one feels better, for your body, your joint structures, by all means, um, go with that one. Um, you can certainly practice both if both feel equally good, and you want to be um, and you want to be able to do it either one on command or on demand. Then fine. That's I, I encourage you to experiment with both and and see. And of course, you can you know depending on the day or mood you're in, do either variation. Um, now, if you have a knee injury or a knee issue. Which and some people the pivoting on the knee just does not feel good on the joint structure. Then you're going to want to do the other uh, transition. So, but I am going to show you both. So we'll start with the uh, pivoting on the knee. That's the one I learned initially um, from RKC many many years ago, um, and even in my strong for research, this is the one I've been doing ever since. So I'm going to go down to my kneeling lunge. Now I'm going to pause here. In the kneeling lunge, I'm still facing the same direction I did in my vertical position. My legs are parallel to each other. I'll just turn to the side so you can see my leg position. Notice that this foot is in dorsiflexion and I'm in that parallel kneeling lunge. Now, from here, to get back down to my hand in the pivoting variation, again, I need to I'll go from a parallel leg position to external rotation. I'm going to pivot on that down knee. And I'll show you from a few different angles so that you can see. So the, this foot's gonna stay planted but I'm gonna pivot on my down knee to get that leg into external rotation. And as I pivot my femur of that down leg, my pelvis and trunk are rotating in conjunction with it. And then I simply put my hand on the ground. So if I was coming from the ground up, that's what it would look like. So I'm just gonna show you this transition a few times, just so it kind of settles in the mind and brain there for you, yeah? So ground up, I pivot on the knee, which enables the rotation of my body to face forward to the screen. And then I pivot back in the knee. And now I'm in that, which gives me that rotation to come back down to the hand. And then I would, now I'm set up for my sweep through to come down back from the reverse, in the reverse get up. Okay, so I'll just show you that same pivot from a, a, another angle, just so that you can see. So that would be here, a little bit forward. So I'm gonna lunge back. So now this is my, my forward facing direction. I pivot on my knee so that you can see it's the rotation from that hip that causes the body and pelvis to be facing this other new direction. So it's about a 90 degree angle change. And then I come down to the knee. Now I'm externally rotated and there would be my sweep through. Okay. And then I'll just show you from one other angle. Now my front is completely uh, my forward facing position is a 180 from the camera angle, I come down and I pivot on that knee. And now you can see I'm facing 90 degrees, but that's gonna show you the angle of my shoulder a little bit better because I wanna make sure to address this point is you have to stay packed in your lats and, and really that's your primary support to stabilize that loaded shoulder. So you're, you might be fine when you're here, but you have to already anticipate the loading of that shoulder that that's going to take in a moment as you're coming back down to the ground. So from here, as I pivot and come to the ground, I have to be prepared for my hand to find the ground and not just 
you know, I'm, I'm going down in movement. I'm not going down in energy, right? It can't be like collapsing to the ground. You have to be prepared the moment that hand is going to hit the ground that this shoulder is supporting, uh, is supported because that's the prime support structure, actually this, for the kettlebell in the air. So that's important to think about why I want to show you from that angle. I come down to that parallel lunge. I pivot on that down knee which enables my body direction to change. I want to easily find that and not jar that hand into the ground because it's going to go up into my shoulder and that can cause the kettlebell arm to um, possibly to lose your alignment. So that's a really important transition is to be prepared as I'm going into this hip hinge, right? I safely, carefully, and with control find the ground. So that is how to do the pivoting on the knee version, I showed you from three different angles, so hopefully you can see um, clearly from all directions what that actually looks like. Now I'll show you what the variation is if you opt to not pivot on the knee. I'm going to stay in the same side for clarity's sake uh, for you, those of you who are watching, so it's very uniform. I'm going to come down into the knee. Now this foot comes up. So that's the primary difference. If I pivot on the knee, for me personally, with my arm, leg, and spine length, I can pivot on my knee and never have to take this foot off the ground. It stays in, as an anchor. Now, um, if I'm not pivoting on the knee, then that foot has to come up. So this becomes the anchor leg. So that's why it's important um, that this foot's in dorsiflexion because that's your anchor. Because I have seen uh, people come down especially if they're going from the ground up. They come to the kneeling lunge from here, now they're stuck. I, I don't want to come up this way, right? So you have to be in dorsiflexion. So if you're um, not going to pivot on the knee, then you want to have that ball joint pushing firmly into the ground because that's your, remember, this is loaded, that's your anchor. So you, again, want to make sure your ankle and foot position is off. So everything matters and everything is important because you're anticipating being under load even when you're learning it or practicing it in the naked get up format and no weight. So I've come down to my kneeling lunge. See, I still have to have that rotation, rotational component of what my body angle needs to change. So if I'm facing forward, there's about, give or take my 90 degree angle change. But if I'm not going to pivot on the knee, then my entire trunk and pelvis and other leg, the forward leg, are going to now move and rotate because either way, I have to end up in this externally rotated position so that I can do the sweep through, right? So if I've come down here and I'm doing the non-pivot one, I move my leg and now, but again, I still want that same control to the ground, but you have to experiment with both and see which, again, as I suggested, see which feels better for you. So now to finish on this premise, I've lifted the whole leg up. As I come to the ground, again, the premise here is the same come down to the ground with control. Don't collapse and do not unpack that shoulder. So just so you can see, right, that how important that is that I come down, keeping that contraction, right? And that's gonna give you the control and keep your joint safe, especially your wrist. You don't wanna collapse down on the wrist in a hard way. That's not going to feel good. But remember, if that collapses, what happens to the position and your awareness of that kettlebell, which is now over your head and your face, right? So that's critically, critically important. So now I'm up to the hand. Now, whether I've done the pivot or I've done the, the whole rotation of that other leg, now I'm in that externally rotated position. This is a good angle for you to see. I've come down to my hand. Now I have enough space. I'm gonna talk about this more specifically in a second for my sweep through. And this is where I'm gonna finish this video was ending on the hand, which is kind of the format I did in the first two videos coming up. Now, uh, I've talked about the focus, so let's just quickly review that. I'm looking straight forward. I look straight forward, and again, whether I'm doing the pivot, uh, sorry, the pivot or the rotation, either way, as soon as I am leaving the parallel neutral lunge position, either way, as soon as I get to the hand, it's in that transition that my focus is going up 
to the loaded kettlebell hand. So I'm always in neutral spine. I never want to be laterally flexed when I'm doing any of these transitions, but in terms of spine position, I mean vertical. So when I'm standing, I'm in a vertical spine position, vertical spine position, right? Or, but once I get to go back down to the hand, now I'm taking that vertical spine angle and I'm taking it on a diagonal, which is, that is my hip hinge. So here I'm not really in hip hinge. This is gonna be easier to see on this side. So that's where I'm going into hip flexion as I get back down to the hand. That is when my focus changes. It's because the, just like in a kneeling windmill, right now my angle is no longer vertical. So I always wanna keep my eye on the weight at that point because I've taken my spine, right? It's kind of, you're changing your equilibrium a bit. So I want to now look up at my kettlebell hand and I'm pushing the ground away. So there's this nice energy going through both arms and through the sternum. Then I, again, think about pushing the down hand or the down foot into the ground. So if I pause the sweep through, I'm really only on one hand, one foot for that moment in time. So you want to make sure that you're really using the ground as leverage. Remember, I talk about how important it is. The ground is your resistance when you're coming out of a squat and for deadlifts. But in a Turkish getup, the ground is also your resistance. You want to push it away from you the more that you drive your energy down into the ground and push yourself away from it, the better leverage it gives you to support here, that loaded arm with the weight. So now I'm on the hand, slow motion. I lift up that foot and I drive it through. And there's my sweep through. Again, we wanna talk about not collapsing. So the, a big point I'm gonna drill home here is how, because they talk about this in the certification, how critically important it is that you never collapse on the down arm because it is a major, major stabilizer and base of support for the kettlebell. So that if your goal again is, well, I, I'm doing a, a 12 or 16 kilogram, I wanna move to a 20 or a 24 if you're a female or even heavier for the males, the heavier you, the weight you go, the more that you're stabilizing side, the more important that it's in the right position becomes if you want to increase your load and stay safe. Yeah, so again, just to finish off there, so I've done my sweep through and I'm still pushing the ground away. So from this angle, I'm corkscrewed and packed. I talk about that so much because it's critically important in all of these movements. So I would have finished my sweep through here and I'd be looking up at my kettlebell. Okay, so that is the breakdown of the Turkish getup in the reverse direction, going from standing to the hand. And I'm gonna close off the next video with, um, or continue in the next video with segueing in the transition from the hand down to the elbow, down to the ground. Uh, to not make each of the videos, as you can see, they're a little bit long because there's a lot of technical cues and information to address and to talk about. Um, I never teach the Turkish get up to a client in one session because it's just, it would take the whole session. It's just too long and it's a lot of information. So thought best to break it down into parts. And I wanted each uh, component to kind of match and mirror um, the, the reverse get up with the getting from the ground to standing. So that is video three in the Turkish get up series. So stay tuned as I close out and do um, and finish out the Turkish get up.